treated members of the so-called Windrush generation. Rudd told lawmakers this week she wasn't aware that people were being deported to meet quotas. But a leaked document published by the Guardian newspaper appeared to suggest otherwise. She tweeted in defence that she wasn't aware of that document or those targets. Now, those quotas and documents were more than just paperwork. They affected lives and they spurred protests. Our Erin Midlaughlin met with one British citizen who had to fight with Rudd's office to reclaim her humanity. We're not wanted here. That's the way they make me feel. I'm not wanted, I'm not valued, I'm not nobody. I have no identity. As far as they're concerned, I'm an alien. Barbara Isaac says in 2008, her life forever changed. A mother of six, struggling with mental health issues and living on benefits, she applied to the British government to renew her welfare, something she'd received for decades, only to suddenly be told there was no record she existed. How can you throw away a whole generation of people that you invited to come here? This is the arrival of more than 400 happy Jamaicans. Barbara is part of what's known as the Windrush Generation, a wave of migrants from the Caribbean encouraged to come rebuild the UK after World War II. They were told they could stay for the rest of their lives. Many lived in the UK without paperwork. Decades later, the government would begin to demand documentation to prove their right to stay. Documentation, many say, they don't have. To make matters worse, the British government acknowledges it destroyed thousands of landing cards. As a result, some were threatened with deportation and deprived of badly needed benefits. I bitterly, deeply regret that I didn't see it as more than individual cases that had gone wrong that needed addressing. I didn't see it as a systemic issue until very recently. Barbara is one of the lucky ones. She kept her old passport, which shows she arrived when she was six. Even so, she had to prove she had the right to remain in the United Kingdom. They wanted 42 years' worth of information. They didn't even save their paperwork for 42 years. Let it took Isaacs years. three years to come up with the money and the paperwork necessary to apply. In the meantime, she says she lost all government support. How can you have lived somewhere all of your life and 50 years later you're sleeping on the streets, begging people for certain you're things? You homeless? Yes, totally. I was homeless destitute. It's so degrading, so degrading. Isaacs was granted residency in 2011, the same year she applied, something the Home Office points to in a statement responding to CNN's request for comment, adding that it's looking into her case, quote, as a matter of urgency. Even though she once again receives government support for Isaacs and so many others from the Windrush generation, the damage is deep and permanent. I've cried me a river, and I've almost drowned in it. A part of me has died, completely dead. Erin McLaughlin, CNN, London. What do you make of this? You cover British politics. Yeah, I do, and apart from the unspeakable human cost of watching something like that, yeah. If we look at the political cost of this to Theresa May, Amber Rudd, the Home Secretary, was one of her key allies. She'd lost another one, Damien Green, in the Westminster mm -hmm. scandal last year. So this puts her in a really vulnerable position. Amber Rudd was also a prominent, um, she was very pro-European. So that was an important balance in the Cabinet heading into the final stages of Brexit, that right. Theresa May had this ally who wanted to soften Brexit because she was an advocate of the EU. Well, all these things now no longer stand. So who is she going to replace her so with? So where does it leave Theresa May in terms of her own? In, a, in an even more vulnerable position, because most of these most of these incidents that we're seeing of the Windrush generation that happened when Theresa May was in charge of the Home Office. Right. She's responsible for a lot of that policy, which Amber Rudd then continued to execute. Mm -hmm. However, that did happen under Theresa May's watch, if you want to put it like that. So it does put her in a very difficult position. Now Amber Rudd has left. We'll see who she's replaced with in the Home Office. But it's certainly going to be difficult for the Prime Minister, I think, to to get herself out of this one because she is responsible however you look at it. Mm. So we'll and have losing hours. Exactly. So mm. we'll have to keep an eye on that. But she's she's hasn't been in a in a position which is anything other than vulnerable and weak.